All right, boys, the Champions League has come to an end. The group stage has come to an end, except for one match. Atalanta Villarreal has been postponed due to snow and will be played tomorrow, 4.30 local time in Italy and 10.30 a.m. Eastern time here in the States. So that means Group F is undecided, but United did end up end up drawing young boys in today's match but starting off we're gonna look at group e and going into the going into the day barcelona held their fate in their own hands they had the control if they beat Bayern, they were through simple as that but nothing about playing Bayern in munich is simple barca got smacked up absolute terrible performance from from, from the spanish side and the table finishes Bayern first, Befica second, and Barcelona third. Barcelona are heading to the Europa League. I, I, it feels weird to say that, considering how dominant they've been in Europe and in Spain throughout the well, the, the past two decades almost. And for Befica, this is absolutely huge for them. Uh, advancing to the round of 16 in a group with Bayern and Barca is, is incredible, an incredible achievement as they beat uh, Dynamo Kiev in I don't even know where the game... I think it was played in Portugal, but I'm not sure. Uh, group F, we, we don't know how that one's finishing yet. United sit first, and the winner of Villarreal... Villarreal Atalanta will finish second. United are going through as first place winners. So that game tomorrow does have a lot of significance, and that is partially due to the reason it was postponed, because they did not want to play a match with this much implication under the conditions that it would have been played under the snow football and the snow do not mix like a lot of other sports it is a tough tough sport and it impacts the game drastically moving on to group g it finishes leo first salzburg second and sevilla third absolutely buzzing that salzburg is going through my fellow american brendan aronson and german mad lad kareem adiyami leading the line for uh, Rebel Salzburg, and they're just they're just a underdog team. May even made it in through the qualification process, and now they're headed to the knockout stage for the first time in the club's history. So, I think we're all going to be rooting for them. They, they got a tough, tough draw going against some giants of Europe that don't know who, but it will definitely be a tough match for the Austrian side. But we're all going to be rooting for them. All going to be pulling for Rebel Salzburg to pull off a mad upset in the Champions League. Uh, Wolfsburg finished last and get eliminated from Europe as a whole. And moving on to probably the most shocking result of the day. Juventus are going through top of the group. Chelsea draws draw Zenit. 3-3. My brain just stopped working for a sec because I didn't even realize it's, it's absurd. Chelsea... Went up early, then went down 2-1, then fought it back, and then conceded an absolute worldly of a goal in the 90th minute to tie. And Juventus held off a 1-0 win and ended up going through in first. And this is huge for Juventus because the teams that they the selection of teams that they have to play now is so much better than if they were finished second. Chelsea now either have to face uh Leo, Bayern Munich. And I don't remember the other two, but it was, Ajax, Ajax was one of them. And then there was one more group winner. Do not remember which one, but, oh yeah, Real Madrid, Bayern Munich, Lille, or Ajax. So that is very tough for Chelsea, and they're going to be very disappointed if they draw Bayern or Real Madrid, considering the fact that it was in their hands, that they had... They had the, the game. They had the goal difference. All they needed was the points. Didn't matter what Juve did. If they won, they were first. And they failed to win. So definitely, definitely tough for Thomas Tuchel. Chelsea have now conceded six goals in their past two games. Conceded three against West Ham and three against Zenit. I know that they didn't play a full-strength lineup tonight, but it was still a good lineup nonetheless. Very talented players in there. Very uh, capable players of keeping a clean sheet. And... Very disappointing. Chelsea have just just fallen off off the off the back of a mountain pretty much in the past past month, it, it, not even month, two weeks, three weeks, something like that. But I want to touch on the Barca game again. I had to turn it off. I, I'm, I'm not gonna lie. I, I had to turn it off. 
it, it was too hard to watch. It, nothing was happening. It felt like I was watching a Bayern Munich training session where they were just they were just going through the motions, doing anything they please, whenever they please. And it just seemed like there were, there was no fight from Barcelona. They were it was another it was a complete other level of play. Uh, Barcelona were lucky it wasn't four, five, or six. Uh, Byron really didn't have much motivation, but they were still going to put out a full strength lineup. And you know we know we know that Byron loved to win all their group games, and they don't like to lose in any fashion against a team, even if it has no implications to them in the future. It's it's the winning culture that they develop at the club, and it's partially. The reason they're so successful in Europe and in Germany, but definitely poor for Barcelona. I wasn't. Ex we weren't. We were all hoping that Barcelona would win, as we would love to see them in the Champions League. You hate for a club of that stature to be in the Europa League, but Befica deserved it. Befica were the better team throughout the group, scoring more goals, conceding less, playing better football. Definitely a fun team to watch, and I'm excited to see what they can do in the knockout stage, if anything. I am I think watching them is definitely going to be more exciting than watching a Barca team with Sergio Dest playing right wing. I, I love Sergio Dest. Don't get me wrong. The man is an absolute legend. He's an absolute mad lad. But he should not be playing right wing for Barcelona against Bayern Munich in the Champions League. He was benched. He was taken off for a poor performance in, in the domestic league, in La Liga. At right back because he did not understand tactically what he needed to do and he was not executing the tactics to Xavi's liking. So to play him at right wing really doesn't make any sense. And I know they have injury problems. I know that they don't have the kind of players that they want, the personnel, but it's still poor. It's very, very poor. And for Barcelona, it's a rebuilding phase. We we all know it. And this is really when it starts to sit in. When they're in, Euro in the Europa League, when they're out of the Champions League, out of the group stage, and... It really just, it saddens me because Barcelona growing up, just ah, watching some of the most beautiful football, always in the biggest games, the, the brightest lights with the best players. And now they have Usman Dembele attacking and he can't even get the ball on target. He looks worse than a Bamiyang fan. It's absolutely mental. But I'm excited for the excited for the Villarreal Atalanta game tomorrow. It definitely, I'm definitely hyped for another day of Champions League, even though it's only one match. 10:30 a.m. kickoff. I'm absolutely buzzing. Middle of the day, finish the game around around 12:30. Get some grub. It's gonna be a good day, lad. It's gonna be a good Thursday, and I'm excited. This game has a lot of implications. We know it's gonna be fiery. We know it's gonna be full metal, full intensity for all 90 minutes because this game has big implications for these clubs. But Villarreal, back in the Champions League for the first time in a very long time, and they're looking to stay in it, and Atalanta looking to not get sent back down to the Europa League and continue a, a good run. But that's going to do it for me today. Champions League football is some of the best football you ever watched. This was a bit of a, an uneventful, not uneventful, but that we have had more exciting match day sixes in recent history. I'll, I'll say that, but... I think most people are just you're waiting for the knockout stage at this point. We're, we're, we're ready. We're ready. We've been ready for the knockout stage, and I'm absolutely buzzing, absolutely buzzing for the knockout stage.